<laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Come on, come on. We are live. We are. Yes. We are live. Here we are at the second season of Lowballing with Joe and Alan. We have some really special guests on with us tonight. A lot of you have heard of uh, um, uh, Mark Zombie Tufo, Pollock, the author. <laughs> Mark Tufo. Rich Rasucci is joining us tonight. He's the author of the Run series. Alan Gamboa, who he writes whatever he writes, but he's a fibrose Texas author and um, uh, Operation Zulu. And then there's uh, me, and I've got some books out there too. But anyways, we're uh, back on track with finding out what, what makes things tick in the uh, writing world. And we were talking about what it was like when we grew up. And uh, I was going to start with my description of what it was like for when I grew up. Uh, it went from the 70s, you were smoking dope. In the 80s, you were snorting cocaine. <laughs> and mixed in there, there was a little bit of LSD and some other things. And then by the time it's all said and done, you're back to just smoking dope. So that's a little bit of LSD? <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little some bit. of us had a little bit more. <laughs> no, uh, uh, you're up in Maine, aren't you, Mark? I am. Um, okay. I'm originally from Boston. Now I live in Maine. Okay. And you're an ex-Marine? Former. Former. There's no ex-Marines, man. Yeah, man. I, uh, <laughs> I I screwed up once and put ex-Marine in one of my books. Boy, I got a lot of <laughs> got a lot of crap for that. That yeah. does suck when you do something somebody doesn't like. No, and I called a magazine a clip once, and oh, oh no, oh my god! I killed a dog once. That was oh no, no, you can't do that. No, I did. I, you know, this was before I knew, before yeah. I knew better. Right, same thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, well, you dogs, had to, you had to do it before we stuff. did. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, you're one of the godfathers <laughs> of this of this genre. Yeah, you know, how long have you been? How long have you been right now? Uh, publishing, self publishing. Uh. Uh, 12 years now? 12 years? Nice. Yeah. That makes you, you one of the early boys. Yeah. Um, I'm sure when you just started out, there was what? Ringo and Jail Born, and that was about it? <laughs> we didn't We didn't even, um, my, I, things all screwed up. We didn't even really know what we were doing. Uh, you know, I, when I wrote my first book, um, submitted it to publishers like everybody does, and I, you know, I've got a giant stack of rejections. <laughs> and uh and my wife was like why don't you self-publish and i was like i didn't even i didn't even know what it was i had no clue what self-publishing meant and she's like well we'll just throw it up on amazon we had this crappy stock image cover unedited and it did about as well as you would expect <laughs> that wonderful piece of literature to do um <laughs> on its own uh you know and then uh it, it, we she's just started catching on and uh finally got enough money to get it edited got a cover and it's amazing what a cover can do for you that's for sure really yeah yeah, yeah without a doubt no doubt so what, what which book was that now is that still up there what was the, the first book i put out was indian hill one uh okay. and it was an old book i had started <clears throat> in college uh and then she's like 10 15 years later i found it in old yellow ruler lined paper and and uh i finished the story and that's what the one we uh, self-published that's funny <laughs> so you you pretty much were always aware that you were going to be a writer no never no? were you writing good books in college was that just for your own entertainment no i took a uh creative writing class <laughs> in college because i needed the credits and sure. uh okay but I, but i screwed up because it was an eight in the morning class and i really like <laughs> drugs and booze in college and eight o'clock uh, wasn't happening so much <laughs> so we had to keep a journal and we could write whatever we wanted in the journal and i was like the easiest thing i could think to do was write a story so and that's that's basically the origin of uh, indian hill one that's a great cool. story oh yeah it is <laughs> yeah it is you know i i followed uh, your work uh, quite a bit um got deep into the zombie fallout series and i'm next going to start with the life of riley uh, matter of fact i'm queuing that up on my on audible because i'm a pet guy i'm a dog guy i have a book where i have a chimp as a protagonist 
and here you've got a whole series of dog stories that I understand that uh, <laughs> dog stories that uh, where you have animals as the protagonist. So yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I don't go far without. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I I got one on each side, and just in case you missed my R two. Yay! Hey, <laughs> I've got a cooler. I've got a cooler like that, an R two cooler. <laughs> so, oh. hey, now, Karen, was that your hey, was that Karen. your second series, uh, Life of Riley? Uh, Book of Riley. <coughs> I think that was like my fifth or sixth series. I think. Okay. Yeah, and I was. Oh God! One day I sat down. And I realized I had six concurrent series going at the same time. And I, I kind of Jeez. blew my own mind. I was like, I freaked out. I had like an anxiety attack of like, why am I writing six different series at the same time? So, you know, I started wrapping some up. But yeah, uh, I want to say Riley was fourth or fifth in that mix. And uh, why did I write that? Oh, that was um, the... <laughs> I wrote a short story, went in an anthology in uh, Armand Rosamilia's books. And then I was like, well, I kind of, this is fun, you know? So I just kind of kept exploring that series and ended up being, it was originally four different novel, novelettes, novellas. And uh, I don't want to say anything, but the fourth one ended um, differently. <laughs> and I had the opportunity to write a fifth. So I, uh, I kind of fixed things I had done in the fourth. Hey, my dogs are growling at each other. Fantastic. It's great. It's great. How so, did you, you juggle know, those? I'm sorry, Joe. How did you juggle all that at the same time? Because that sounds six concurrent series, man. That's just, I have, I, I barely get time to write one. So how did you yeah. juggle all of that? It, it freaked me out. It, it did. Um, I was honestly like, what, what are you doing? I just, I don't know, you know, the OCD in me was like, ooh, let's write zombies, ooh, let's write uh, werewolves, ooh, write, let's write about dogs, and uh, yeah, I, I don't recommend it. I, I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, the, maybe finish I've, it, then head to the next. I've, I've gotten to the point where I'm doing only one book at a time. I used to try to do multiple ones, and you know, I would come back and do a reread and find out that I have a whole scene from another book, Oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> opened up the wrong one now when you write you seem to uh you seem to have an ease of injecting comedy into your work and i wanted to ask you about that because that's one thing where i feel i'm weak is putting comedy into my book even though i'm probably one of the funniest people you've ever met in this world <laughs> uh, i have a problem translating that into the written word um, now, when you're reading your comedy back to yourself, do you say, oh, that sounds stupid, but what the hell? Because that's usually what I come up with with my comedy. <laughs> I, generally, uh, I, that that's usually my normal response. And then I, I feel bad. There's genuine times where I laugh at my jokes, and I don't think you're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> you are not alone, sir. No, no. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's bad form. You know, but there's sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, I just said that. So uh, you're asking, how, I don't know, how, you know, you stop how I do it. I don't know. I don't know that I actually have a particular method. I mean, it probably doesn't hurt that half the time I've been eating edibles, you know, so there's that. <laughs> you stop. My dog is attacking my arm. I'm sorry. This is so professional. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't really we don't really go off of a professional motif here. Actually. Yeah, you're gonna fit right in with you that. Know, um, yeah. yeah, you know, my dog, my wife's gonna be coming home soon, and my dogs are gonna start barking like you wouldn't believe. So but I don't. I'll just prepare you for that right now. And no, no you know, and if people want to judge you for that, if they're gonna judge you for something, uh, one way I've or the other, you don't have a choice. I've been judged for worse. It's all right. <laughs> Back a few years ago, there was a point where people were talking about you having a TV series or a movie. And I understand I understand that was actually in the works for a while, which congratulations, even if it didn't come to fruition or not, I don't know. But I did see that you were having problems with all these people wanted to show up for your 
for your your showings and and I actually saw you writing letters saying, please, people, this is just beginning stages. We don't even know what's going on. Don't come. You know? uh, yeah, I, I've got I've got a long list of folks that want to play certain parts, and I, I'd love them to. Um, you know, I had uh, one set of producers. Uh, you know, they had everything on track, and then I like not nothing ever happened. And then I had this other set, and I mean, they actually were getting money they had money on board um they had they were shopping it everywhere they had this really slick packet uh pitch packet whatever they call it all ready to go and it had a pretty good head of steam uh right up until covid and then covid just ah. boom everything kind of went to the wayside and honestly i uh will you shut the hell up <laughs> Honest, honestly, uh, it, it's not something I think about much. You know, the the series. I mean, would it be? It'd be unreal. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'd fall out of my chair. Right. But um, I you know I don't. I, I it's not something I ever really ponder. You know, every once in a while I get a message from the producer and lets me know what's not happening. You know, so. Yeah, but that's still good news. I mean. <laughs> If you're getting messages pro, from a producer, even saying, "Hey, we're not going to do this right now," I mean, it right. doesn't mean it's it's dead. So, right. no, best of I, luck. I would love to be a series. Um, oh, what's the damn show? Uh, Archer. You guys ever seen Archer? I would love yeah. to see it done every in episode. I would. That would be killer. I think you could really do it justice in that format. You want zombies? That's how you get zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool, though. That'd be excellent. <laughs> oh, Tony Canopa joined us and he said he wants to see your dog again. Complainer? <laughs> Show your face. Show your face. Oh, I can't. <laughs> see, he gave your dog some fame and now he can't get enough of it. I can't even get her in the damn frame. Stupid camera. Yeah. She's, uh, uh, she's gorgeous. Yeah, she's deaf. And um, if she doesn't get the attention she feels she deserves, she is relentless. <laughs> hey, did you ever get your zip line going? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Thanks, no. Um, I was trying to do like a 400-foot run, and uh, I just couldn't get it high enough up in the tree to take oh, out the zip. And I mean, I... I, I was like 30 feet up and then standing on the top rung of my ladder trying to do this thing. And my wife's like, you're a fucking idiot. And uh, I'm oh, main man swe- crashed through his house today. Try, trying to make a zip line. Uh, um, is swearing. All right. Now that I've dropped an F bomb. Is that cool? Oh, I don't care. Okay. I didn't hear it. Did you, did you actually we won't swear? Tell on you. Yeah. Did you actually won't. swear or was that a figment of the audience and imagination? I, I sure, we'll this- go with that. Yeah. There's a law someplace that says if you're a Marine, you can say whatever the hell you want. So. <laughs> Former Marine. <laughs> yeah, I never, uh, unfortunately, I never got the zip line up and running. And I'm pretty bummed about that. Yeah, because I saw you doing it. I was thinking, I thought a guy, a guy wire from a sailboat would be your best bet. Because you can yeah, get I like 4,000 pounds of tension on those. Yeah, I mean, this this wire was a zip line wire. It's just uh, with that oh, kind okay. of you needed to be up like 40 or 50 feet in a tree. And I'm like, what the hell? How am I going to get there to ride this damn thing? You know, that's a very valid point. <laughs> yeah, that, that wire gets heavy over distance too. <laughs> yeah. That's... Yeah. And that was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing ventured, nothing gained, you know, what the hell, what the hell. So yeah. when you're for... TV, all you got to do is get a t-shirt and, Drape it over the zip line and go for it. I've seen yeah. it done several yeah. times. Yeah, over telephone wires, belt. even. Yeah. Over telephone wires. Yeah, I bet that t shirt was real good at reducing friction and <laughs> yeah, grab right. on going there. Yeah. So much easier in the television world. So, when you first started out, you know, what kind of advertising did you have back then? I mean, did you use any? Did you, how did you promote yourself? At, at very first, when I first started writing, uh, the kids were a lot younger. Uh, like I said, we we couldn't afford a real cover. We couldn't afford editing. If I couldn't afford that, there was no way we were advertising. Um, yeah. I know Tracy did some 
Facebook ads. Uh, back then when I started, we, we never got on it, but Pixels Inc. was huge with advertising. We couldn't get on there. Um, I think she did some stuff on Goodreads at the beginning. Sure. Yeah. I um, What now here comes the luck factor. What was going on 12 years ago was uh, Amazon was trying, we didn't know this at the time, but Amazon was trying to force the big six into compliance. Because if, if you remember, like ebooks for the big guys were coming out at 15, 16 bucks. And it's like, why? Why are your ebooks 16 bucks? I mean, you don't have to deliver them, you're not printing them, there's no paper, there's nothing. So Amazon was really pushing indies. So Amazon was doing my advertising for me, and that's how I nice. gained a base audience. And I just hit a sweet spot between where Amazon was playing games with the big six, and uh, you know that lasted about two years. And then it then it got scary because the big six realized how big of a share they were losing, and so they came into compliance. And now all of a sudden, price wise, I'm competing with you know Stephen King and Dean Koontz and everybody else. So you know, who am I? You know, so when someone has five bucks on their Kindle account and they want to get a book, it's not Mark Tufo, you know? So it got, uh, you know, we had the nice big curve going up and then it went whoop. And it's like, uh oh, um, what do we do now? And that's when uh, Tracy really started learning about marketing. I mean, honestly, if you want to have that conversation, you should probably get her on as a guest, you know? I talked to her, I tried a couple of times and she says yes, but she can't get any time. She says yeah. she, she, she gets so busy. I was going to have both her and Sheila shed on. Oh, um, yeah. Sheila, I, she, yeah. She, she, Sheila's awesome. I finally. Oh, yeah. I was, um my editor issues, man, they were horrendous. I, I ran through like seven editors within my first five years. So you get no continuity and it was just hard. And finally found Sheila and I've been wow. using her. It's been awesome. Yeah, she's she's now my editor also. I I just did a, a a story that I sent to her to get a developmental edit on, and uh, and I think you did the same thing with your new your work experimenting with a new series from what I understand. Yeah, from reading on Facebook, and um, yeah, she's she's got a lot of insights and she's she's very good. I'm I'm glad to be a part of the of the uh, yeah, Tracy's the group. The only thing with Sheila, and this is not about her, it's about me. My grasp of the English language is not so good. So when I get my books back from Sheila, it is a lot of red. I get a sea of red. Well, we are not really English, and she should understand that. We're American. Our English is bastardized. This, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. <laughs> okay with that myself. <laughs> So, uh, um, Alan, ask a question. I know you got one. Yeah. Have you ever licked to people? I have not. I should probably do, <laughs> just to see what I've been writing about for the last 12 years. First it time I read funny. that. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, that's fairly, uh, happens pretty fairly um, early on in the first book. And I know if, if you like that line, you're pretty much in for the whole series. But if you go, right. what the f is this? <laughs> then you're out. You know, you, you, you wasted a paragraph reading my stuff, and now you're out. You know, so no no harm, no foul. Because it doesn't get any better. My, my juvenile sense of humor pretty much stays there the entire time. So this new series that you're you're looking into, or just uh, I know you're in the early, early stages of it, but uh, what is it? Uh, I'm... You know, I, I just talked about how six series gave me anxiety. Now I'm doing four. Uh, I'm trying to do a fantasy. Uh, that I've been wanting to do a fantasy now for uh, three years or so, and I, um, I've been, I piecing it together a little bit at a time. And then I, I'm sure most of you have read John Dies at the End the books, um, and I, I wanted to kind of do something in that vein. I just I find that frenetic, crazy energy fascinating so i'm trying to do my own spin on it uh what the hell else do i got going on oh um 
doing a gothic, um, sort of gothic book actually with Sheila. And then I think I got something else on going on. It's funny that you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Mark. It's funny that you said John dies at the end because when you're talking about your movie, you know, your series being made, I thought about a movie, you having a movie like that. That's just funny that that I I, I was thinking you know John That's dies at the end cool. that that kind of your you're frenetic like that you know your your characters and all that and your humor. <laughs> That's you know, funny because so. somebody said that in the post when I talked about it and I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. You know, it's one of those trees for the forest kind of thing. You know, forest right. for the trees. I don't know. Right. I know where you're at. <laughs> I We're all that same forest somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but that'd be cool. Something like that's, that. Yeah. I'm having a blast writing it, so that's all. Well, you did, you did, you did dabble in the sci-fi with the with the Shrouded, Shrouded World series. Um, you did yeah, job. yeah, Indian Hills sci-fi, and that's that's probably my first love in terms of um, uh, books writing. that I like to read. So mm-hmm. I, it felt right to write. I kind of like to write what I read. Right, so, and I, I I I can relate to that. You see, that's uh that's kind of the big difference between indie authors and the big authors, you know, the big, um, we'll jump from genre to genre and we pretty much are, are not, are not expecting a certain dollar amount every time we write a book. Sometimes we're thinking that it might not make a sense. So we tend to write what we want to write and not what, uh, not sticking to one genre and one group and one, yeah, what have you, yeah. I've got a couple of that um, I'd be lucky if I could buy Starbucks with, you know, so. Right. You know, I mean, I think we all have those, but who was it? Somebody said the other day, Dean, Dean Coots wrote one book and then published it 300 times as a different title, you know. <laughs> and it's not that way with indie authors. Every, every story that we get into, every series we get into, uh, is completely different from the last. I know I, I have. I, I can definitely see the benefits of formulaic writing, you know, um, being able to churn stuff out. You know, I mean, there, there's some definitely, I mean, James Rollins got some uh, pretty formulaic, and I love him. You know, I, I'm like, I know exactly what's going to happen. You know, there's this guy, he's a specialist in his field, and it, this, the woman he used to date's a specialist in some other field, and then there's some world event, and they have to get together, and you know, it, it's the same story 300 times. And I'll read it 300 times. <laughs> so we had uh, we had a Nick Cole on. We've had a couple of Coles on, but uh, we the uh, author of the Multitude series. But we also had the uh, Galaxy's Nick Edge. Cole. Yeah, Galaxy's Galaxy Edge. Edge. Yep. And, he and was, Forgotten Ruin. Forgotten Ruin, which good series, both of them. He, um, he has basically built up an entire network around him. So all he's doing is is writing. He's not doing any of the publishing, any of the, you know, I mean, he's like has a beta readers on staff and and he's churning out, geez, I think they're churning out between him and Jason Onspach. They're turning out one and a half books a month. And, crap. and they're yeah, they're military fiction, and all their covers are made up probably before they even start writing it. And he's been very successful with it. And I was wondering if if you have gone anywhere near that route, or is it just still you and Tracy? And you know. I, I, on a good year, I'm putting out four books a, a year, and uh, so year. I get one every three months. I, I unfortunately do not have a team. I do have Shields, my editor. Uh, I have a revolving door on betas. Every, you know, it's every time you get a good beta reader, they, you know, their life gets in the way. It's like, hey, I need a book read. You can't have your own life events going on. You know. But, what are they so, thinking? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the I, worst beta reader. I, I got you, brother. I got you. <laughs> you know, and, you know and then sometimes you get a beta reader. And this is totally off the hook, but I had a couple beta readers that like book was good I'm like, what? <laughs> thanks <laughs> well they read it <laughs> we can, we can Wait, but did they <laughs> i mean yeah what am i gonna do with that feedback you know um 
<laughs> no, I wish I, I. There's a couple of things I wouldn't mind teams on, like um, the social net media network stuff. That would be awesome if yeah. I, I could unload that because that that is a lot part of the day. But I can't forget about it because that's you know that's the reason I'm doing what I'm doing. Without Facebook, I'm probably still in a cube, man. Hate yeah. my job. I guarantee you know. So yeah. I, I can't not do the social media and the correspondence and the and email and all that fun stuff. You're absolutely right. We all have to, and I'm, I'm a recluse by nature. So it's very, very hard for me to do that because for one, a lot of things that I read online about people and what they say they're doing and what they say they're thinking and whatever, I don't believe it. I think, I think, I think 50% of the people in this world are full of crap, you know? So, but you can't, you can't call people out like that. You just gotta keep it light and, but you gotta do yeah. it. You have to yeah. do it. I, yeah. I stay away from anything political or, or flashpoint or it's just, and why would you want my opinion? I'm, you know, I'm a stoner. Yeah. I, you know, nope. <laughs> I don't, I don't care, you know, so. Yeah. That's um, such a problem keeping my mouth shut on that. I, I do. <laughs> I, I just, well, I, uh, I, I don't know. You know, in, at the end of the day, this it's still a business, and I've seen, um, I've seen really talented writers uh, just alienate half their audience. And yep. I, I don't know. Hey, if you can afford it, hey, more power to you. We, that fine, you know. But uh, right, I, I I don't know. I don't want to tell half my audience what i feel you know and then they just yeah oh. i agree so i agree i agree 100 percent. we alan and i are members of another group don't tell them about and, that group and they oh. become <laughs> oh wait they become yeah. so politicized that i don't think we've talked about writing in over a year and um it's so yeah, that's, any that's where where i talk about my politics and that's and that's it i don't know that's any, the only any, place anything become a flashpoint you know um when i was yeah. in the corporate world i was in hr and i try to keep my social media the way i did hr i mean when you meet a people person you're just like hi hello how are you you know and that that's it not not your hair looks nice or why you wearing <clears throat> shoes or anything yep. like that i mean anything that can be construed someone's going to get angry about it I, it's just a, it's a strange time we live in right now yeah i just you know, and it's, it's sad, too, because if somebody came up to me and said, hey, dude, I really love your Crocs, I would be flattered. Did you that say Crocs? Yeah. Dude, said, dude, Joe, who says work? that? Don't, don't <laughs> Joe's <laughs> friends. <laughs> guys that hang out with Joe. Apparently Joe, people Joe knows. <laughs> Joe, you guys wear Crocs? Uh, no. So, again, the uh, the interview ended early. Mark two, Foby. How about hey dudes? Or a twelve year old hey boy. Dudes? I don't wear. Do we, wear do we wear hey dudes? Come on, man. Give me a break here. I wear Vans. I don't wear hey dudes. Oh jeez. <laughs> Sorry, man. I would. Just, I have something to say here, but if I said it, it would it would come back to me as, as being hateful and spiteful. And, uh, and I just I give me. I just give me crap. Should, oh, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Let, that's let me let I, me say something, Mark. And not to embarrass you. Oh, it's up to him now. Well, I, I talk to you all the time. <laughs> um, how's it feel? I don't want to embarrass you or anything like that. To be a celebrity in the zombie world. I mean, I, every time somebody says a list of books, you're always at the top. I do I, not. Not one percent of me considers myself a celebrity. Not. Not even a little bit. I, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, so it's not like I'm out in crowds and people are like, oh, look, it's Mark Tufo. You know, I, <laughs> nothing. You want to give us does. your address so people can? <laughs> <laughs> I did that in Zombie Fallout One. I put my real address in that book where I lived in Colorado because I'm a dumbass. Boy, you know, what happened with that? I, uh, you know. I was writing about uh, Mike Talbot, and he lived in that little turtle in Colorado. And I, uh, I just wanted to have a layout of little turtle, so I, I took a copy from the um, HOA, and I even circled my address. And this is where Mike <laughs> lives. Put a little arrow, and it was funny because this was I early. I think I on saw that. 
I gave the book to a, a girl I worked with, a woman I worked with, uh, and she's like, do you know you have your address in this book? And I'm like, oh, no. I, it just never... That's how much like of a celebrity I feel I am, Alan. I, I don't even realize that I put an address on that people might want to go and check out. Um, well, I, okay, let me let me rephrase it, Mark, um, because you, you seem like a really humble guy. You know, um, I've been around you for years, but this is the first time I ever talked to you, you know. And how do you, how about your fan? How do you feel about fans of your books? You know, I mean, because uh, I mean, you're, Mark, every time, you know, it's it's Mark Tufo. You got to read Mark Tufo. You got to read Zombie Fallout, you know, Like and Fallout. You got to read, you know, you got to read his books. And people, you really have a rabid fan base. You really do. And I am honored and humbled by it. Um, that people want to read my stories means the world. And I, I get a lot of messages about, and these kill me, you know, um, like I was going, I was in a really dark place. Uh, so-and-so something happened, this happened and, and your books really got me through. And I was like, that means the world or, um, you know, they, they join my books with their kids or them and their spouse listen to on the roadway. And that, I mean, that was something I did with my dad, with Stephen King, you know, we bonded over books so that folks, are doing that with my stuff you know i'm just right honest to god i've been blue collar the vast majority of my life uh former marine yeah you know, i just it's not something i ever expected uh certainly I, i'm enjoying it but it's surreal it is it is right. strange to me oh good that's that very cool man very cool thank you it is it's uh you know i mean um I have yet to meet any anybody who's arrogant about their fan base. You know, everybody I've talked to has, mm -hmm. and we've had some we've had some pretty pretty amazing authors on this show, and um, they're just they're 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 like you, they're like us. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't anybody reading my book. You're my best friend. You know, thank you. Sure, I, I mean, can't, I can't can't tell you how much that means to me that you took the time. You're supporting me, book. no. Otherwise, I'm I'm literally some weird guy drooling over a keyboard typing weird <laughs> shit down. You know? Yep. And I mean, you know, nine to five crap. You know, I'm, I've done some bad jobs. Oh, I don't dude, want... dude, I can't even. We should compare. I've had some bad jobs. <sighs> but got to pay. Well, let's bills. whip out. Let's whip, let's whip out the bad jobs and see who has the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> I did roofing. And oh, that yeah. sucks. Nope. Oh. I had a hip replaced because of the roofing I did. Oh, no. <laughs> you told us that was because of Cancun. That weekend yeah. in Cancun, man. You well, can't come when you're 50 years old. I'm not, it's not going to happen over one glory hole, okay? <laughs> hey, Mark, insofar as technique, uh, what's what's been the easiest and hardest thing for you? Um. You know, honestly, writing, this is what people don't understand, uh, the folks that want to kind of dip their toe into this particular field. Writing is the, to me, and I believe most of us, writing is the easiest part of this whole equation. Uh, I Agreed. find that doing the book is, is no problem. It, it's, it's the rereads, it's the editing, it's the fixing, it's the timelines, it's the marketing, it's all of that that's like, you know, so can't agree with you more. Yeah, the writing uh, is definitely the easiest. The uh, editing and getting it out there is probably the hardest. I, yeah, I, I would, I would agree with, I would agree with that. I mean, of course, uh, I see so many ads out there for marketing, and everybody's like, "Oh, I've got five hundred thousand contacts," and yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm like so impressed. Going, got 500,000 emails this can go to. And at the same time, I'm going through my emails, delete, 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 delete. I'm not reading any of the title of any of the mail. So it's like, do I want to get yeah. into email marketing? And we've, I've been seeing some new things, new things on Facebook lately that I want to try and get into bigger ads that are coming up in actual feeds. And I want to get into that more. But yeah, I, I'd be lying, Joe, if we start, if you start hitting me up in that aspect, I'm very weak in that. 
I honestly, I have just, it's been nice because of Tracy. Um, I've been able to distance myself from the business aspect, the advertising and the, and the marketing and the numbers. Yeah. Is great. I, I don't even like, she's just like, here's a contract, sign it. Okay. Okay. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's my involvement. So. Yeah. Well, I know she's busy. I mean, I, her and I don't talk that much when I got a book coming out and stuff, but you know, just. <laughs> Tracy and Hello. I communicate by messenger. We live in the same house and we communicate by messenger. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you you were very you were very fortunate to marry a woman who can take part and was willing to take part in such a shoot from the hip type yeah, situation. I, she must have known. She must have known that you were never going to hold a regular job. I, I did all right. Um, I you know she she read we both read Indian Hill one probably a dozen times each and and she saw something in that story and that was she got the ball rolling she's the one that like at the time had to buy a big book of where the all the publishers were where to submit all the all the manuscripts and then when you know everything kind of went south uh, she was the one that pushed towards indie and all that stuff. She found the editor. She found the, the cover artists. You know, I honest to God, I, I'd probably just have a stack of loose sheets, you know, yeah. with my books. I don't even know if I would have continued to write, you know. That's incredible. That's incredible. She's taken so much of the burden off of you. That's a beautiful thing. No, dude, yeah. it, it's it's amazing. I, I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without her. Wow. One of my one of my best friends is my boss now. I work for a construction company as an estimator, and um, he was telling me years ago, uh, before I was even published on Amazon about Indian Hill. So, you know, must uh, and that's the one series I haven't gotten into of yours. I've done Shrouded World, and I'm going to do the Dogs, and I've done Fallout, but I haven't done uh, Indian Hills, and it sounds like I probably should. Well, there's going to be a quiz a... interview, Joe. So it's going to be what? There's going to be a quiz. You... Was okay. a quiz. <laughs> but it's my show. I get to make them. <laughs> Asked you about his Grocks. Asked you about his Grocks. My Crocs? What the hell's a Grock? It's a Croc. <laughs> <laughs> the ru little rubber. People on boats own Crocs, okay? All there is to it. I've never put one on. <laughs> Everybody says they're comfy. I've never worn one. I don't know. Yeah, me either. <laughs> me either. God, I didn't know they were that uncool. How about eight? How about, well, you wouldn't know that, Joe. Because <laughs> I live in a flyover state. No, because you're the not cool. listeners. It's not the not flyover state. Much. It's oh, you. No. He went there. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Let's get back to something that means something. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Mark. <laughs> Why Bulldogs, Mark? Is that what um, you grew up with? Uh, no, actually. Um, my dad was a former Marine and uh, he loved Bulldogs. We never had one growing up. Um, and then uh, we were out in Colorado and Tracy, my wife, got a call from her uncle. He's a, geez, he was a top in the Marines. Uh, and he used to like to hang around at the Marine Corps Depot, uh, at the recruiting station. And uh, somebody came in, one of the sergeants there had a dog they couldn't keep, and it was a bulldog. So they, he, he called us, he's like, you want this dog? And I was like, sight unseen. I got in my car, and we headed out, and we got this big, beautiful animal called George, and oh, fell in love. So our first bully was a rescue, um, and just so much personality, we just kept going that's great Just, i love yeah. them how many yeah. have you had uh it was george fantastic beast and then we got henry who was a big star in the zombie fallout series yep. uh, and then riley psychotic that dog was psychotic <laughs> <laughs> and then now i got uh chloe and holly chloe and awesome. holly yeah no they don't they don't they're not known for living very long are they no, we try to keep. That's the topic we don't talk about, Joe. Yeah, hey, I know. I I've, I've always had dogs. I I was a president of the Humane Society in Polk County for a time when they were getting their building built. So I 
I fostered probably 50 dogs, Jill and I have, and each one, it breaks your heart when you have to give them up, give them away. Brutal. Brutal. I, would, I could imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and but that's still a hell of a thing. When you hear what some people are willing to do to an animal and think it's all right, it's 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 it, it enrages me in the same way pedophilia does, I guess. Just makes me feel so much rage that it's hard to deal with. But yeah, there is, there I love is. I love the relationship you have with your dogs and the way you write about them and the way you incorporate them into stories. I think I think that's uh, I think it's a lot of fun, and I've I've, I've done that myself. And uh, pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. they mean the world to me, so it makes sense that they, you know, end up end up in books. Yeah. Yep. Do you read a lot of other authors' work? I do. I uh, I had when I originally started. Uh, I don't want to say getting big. When catching on, and and I was I was writing a lot. Um, I my reading really suffered. Took a hit and. Right. That bummed me out because I love to read. So I've, I love I've really, to read. I've, I've made it a point that I have to read. You know, you, you know, don't don't pick up the iPad and watch Netflix or or, or whatever. I just uh, yeah, and I, I I make sure I go down. We still have a bookstore. I go down the bookstore, load up, or get on Bam and order a bunch of stuff. Um, no, but I, yeah, I do read. I'm all over the place. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. So you're actually reading physical books, not on a Kindle per se, or God, you know, my my wife bought me, I think a Nook when Nooks were a thing, and uh, the first time that battery died, I was like, "Hun, my books never died," you know. So I put that in. The- <laughs> I'm exactly the same way. I have I have a Kindle, and, and uh, I'm not even sure where it is. I oh, just I'm opposite. All books. I, I need that tactile feel, you know. I, I need uh, the the pages, and I don't know, just old school, I guess. Yeah, I like I'm, just, I'm, back. Doing, I'm doing I Audible. Back. I'm doing Audible. That's it exclusively these days, and it's kind of sad, but you know, with building this shop out back here, I'm building myself a wood shop out back, and and then working forty hours a week, I just don't have time to sit down with a book. So. Uh, Audible been huge for me i would never ever discount i would never say a bad word about audiobooks yeah uh, it's been it's been probably better for me than any of the others i know. um about three years in uh i got t- two years maybe i don't know i was on like zombie fallout three or something this company tanto media reached out and like hey we'd like to get your audiobook rights sounds like audiobook what the hell is an audiobook all i could think about was my mom in the kitchen with her books on tape that, you know it sounded <laughs> yeah, like that's where it started yeah. that's exactly what it is yeah. yeah just sounded like horrible you know like a tin can or something and uh, i was like yeah audio go for it take them i don't even and you know they paid me not much <laughs> and uh but i don't know what the hell they did because as soon as tanto put those things out they exploded so another luck thing because i mean i was like take the books and then they um they were like hey we found this narrator sean runette uh we think you'd like him i was like i don't care i great he, i didn't even listen to him i was like he, he sounds fantastic that's awesome just, let me just go cash a check and uh and sean runette became michael talbot i mean he i, I think people are probably more in love with him than they are uh with yeah, me yeah it's- it's amazing what they, the audio books will do. Yeah, they Tantor's really nice, you. too. Tantor's pretty good. They, they they hit me the same way they hit you, and honestly, as soon as I get into the Tantor, everything, just like you said, it just blew up. It was great. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what marketing genius they got going on at advertising, but it was insane. I, you know, when, when I very first started out, not that I sold 100 books, but if I sold 100 books... 98 of them were ebooks and two were yep. you know uh physical copies at this point it's probably like 88 audiobooks and you know eight freaking ebooks and four physical you know it's crazy yeah yeah people are listening to them all over the place all the time so it you know i mean there's a lot to do in this world if you're doing it, it at all you know it's easy it's, it's yeah. easy to listen to a book when you're Know, you're yeah. driving to work or you're taking your kids to school or something like that. Or you're working you know, in it's, the it's yard. Exactly. Yeah. You can just turn it on, 
put your headphones yeah. on and you're reading a book. It's great. I'm doing Wheel of Time right now on audio. You know, when I get oh, in the that was that was uh, excellent. Wheel of Time on audio. Is that Michael Kramer? Yeah. Doing the Wheel of Time. Do you know who's who the narrator is? I think it's Michael I don't, Kramer. I don't know. There's two. There's there is a female and a uh, a male. Uh, you know, I just finished the Harry Potter series for this. Jim Dale. Oh my God, that guy is talented. Holy crap, he could he could read a dictionary. He was awesome. Um, it took me a minute to get back into the wheel of time, but uh, yeah. So I mean, I do audiobooks from in the car, and then I read physical copies. You know, when I'm uh, at home. Well, yeah, I, I, like I feel his, I feel it's like important as a writer to uh, to read constantly. I mean, I don't even I, watch TV. My whole my whole world is about the written world and what guys like you and I are putting out. Can you guys hear that? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was not a growl. Honestly, it's the best part of my day right there. <laughs> now, where's the people? Um, Mark, a lot of guys that we, a lot of other authors that we've interviewed, they, most of them, a lot of them take hits in their reading. You're one of the few that have it you know they because a lot of them are like yeah i don't read as much as i used to and like joe listens to on audible now i listen to it more on audible now stuff i want to read so it it seems that's that's that you're ahead of the game that way because it seems like a lot of authors you know they just it, it kills their reading for them yeah you know i've i've even talked to tracy about this because um we've got an exclusive with audible and what we used to do when it was Tantor or even when we released a few books on our own, we would drop the ebook first and then the audio book when Sean was done with it. So there'd be a three month lag there and we could get some ebook sales. Um, but Audible wants them dropped at the same time. Like, mm, God, I would love to go back to kind of getting a three month cushion and, you know, bump those sales up a little bit, you know, but I, you know, Audible pays my bills and they keep the electricity on. So I, uh, you're good, Audible. I, I thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any now? Do you have any of your Audibles out? Because I haven't listened to any of yours on Audible yet. That have like sound effects, music, anything like that. No, we haven't. Or multicast. Done, no, every um, every book is done by Sean. Uh, have not done the. I've thought about it. I'd love to. God, I'd love to see like a cast one done. You right, know. Yeah. But I, I can't imagine how much that costs. Yeah, that's oh, got to yeah. be pricey, right? Yeah. And I listened to he, one by Mark Greeny the other day. It's armored. And it had music, had cat, you know, had probably 10 people in the cast doing the voices, you know. And it just, it was a great experience. You know, I, it's it's like, uh, it kind of spoils you now on Audible a little bit, you know. Cause you're, I, that, was the same, that was the same reaction I got uh, from Jim Dale and switching to another narrator, another series. Because... I, I don't know if you ever listen to Jim Dale, but he's he's pretty talented cat. Are you, okay? are you gonna be okay there, Mark? <laughs> they're not they're not turfing on you, are they? If, if the screen goes black, man, you know something happened. <laughs> okay, well, I'm more worried about we'll red. call we'll call someone, you know. But, uh, I'd appreciate you know, it. I I listen to a, a, the theatrical versions of like oh that I this uh, series by Craig Allenson. I don't know if you guys know who he is. I've heard uh, the name. No, it's, uh, it's the Expeditionary series. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's it's a it's a very good series, very very comedic, very funny, but uh, it's 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 just all around good. But they did one of their books. They did they did in the theatrical version, and and I hated it. I absolutely hated it. There was so much noise included in the story; it just bored me silly. Yeah, it wasn't mixed good enough. Some of them are. I've I've listened to a few like that where, like, the the sound effects take you out. Yeah. Because they're too loud for the narration. Too much, too loud. Whatever. Yeah. You know, that's true. So explosions while somebody's trying to talk and tell me the story just didn't thrill me. So when you yeah, told me I about the, that. about Greeley doing the armored, I would. That, that that's kind of. What I'm telling you, it's head. a good audible. Mark Greeny's yeah. armored man. Is that the same guy that did this Gray Man show that's yeah. out on Netflix yes. now? Yep. Okay. Yep. I don't know if you guys have seen that yet. I read up on right. it. Was it all right? Uh, I never read the book, but I saw the I saw the Netflix show. It was. I it's mean, a it's, popcorn it's not gonna, movie. 
it's not going to win any awards, but it was, I mean, it was a little corny, but it was good. It was, I mean, I I feel better for seeing it. I wanted to see it. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've watched some Netflix stuff and been like, oh man, I just wasted it. Exactly. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. They're really uneven. They're really uneven in their movies. That's It's all about money. Yeah. It's, It's money. It's how much they can pump out. If they get a good movie, it's just like a good book. They make a ton of money and they just move on. Yeah. Yeah. Like like zombie Fallout nineteen, right? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you're calling me out, Rich. So if you make it to nineteen, you're doing all right, right? That means right. That's, that's a lot. That I'm is. Like, I'm right yeah, is that what is that what ends the series, Mark? You quitter. <laughs> you get to go nineteen. What's the matter with you? You get to nineteen, you get to drop the mic, man. <laughs> I made it to mine to nine in my series, and I said that's enough. Uh, you on. know, I was going to stop at one. I was going to stop at three. I was going to stop at six. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And here we are. 19 comes out in, I think, October. Wow. November. That's just unbelievable. Yeah. Does that, does that end it? That's awesome. No. <laughs> you got to look at that. You, you got to look at somebody that writes 19 books in a series. I'm desperately trying to think of anyone ever that's done that other than a comic book. And I, right. and I can't. So you, you wrote 18 books that didn't suck. I mean, you got to look at it like that. So and they're not like this, that this no, you know, like that, books. you know. There was a series well, called Gore, G-O-R, and it's a sci-fi series. Back oh, that's the right. Uh, you remember that? Yeah, I remember yeah. Gore. It's a, it's a, that like, like John like Carter 20, Mars, but racier yeah. and, and yeah. not as good. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of slave women in it. Yeah, I think uh, Grafton is it Sue Grafton? She did that murder series. I think she went through oh, the entire yeah. alpha. She went oh, like the alpha bit. My wife was reading those. Well, you're she catching loved. up with her, Mark. Stephanie Plum. Is that is that what it was? I can't, I can't remember. I, I thought it was Gra- Grafton. Grafton. I don't know, but no. She, Stephanie Plum's the character. She's actually passed away, so somebody else is actually writing her series. Uh, yeah, I remember she was working through the alphabet. My my wife absolutely loved those books, but I never read them. No, me neither. Yeah, yeah. not my genre. Kind of, okay, sounds kind of like a chick flick, but it's okay. <laughs> you gotta Sorry. be proud. You gotta be proud of nineteen books, and you're not done. Plus all the other stuff that you have out there. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah, it's yeah, really it, prolific. You're very prolific. Very pro- prolific. It, yeah, it's amazing what you do when you uh, have to eat. You know, yeah. so. Well, here's it's, just some. The zombie good. Fallout it's series, good. the Lycan Fallout series, the United States of Apocalypse with Armand, uh, the Michael Ta- Talbot Adventures in Indian Hill, uh, the Z Hunt, Winter's Rising, Demon Fallout, Shrouded World, Book of Riley, Callus. I mean, Jeez. that's just not even going to the numbers of the books that are in those ones that are series. Yeah. You're insane, Mark. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I, think, I think the uh, United States government definition of his insanity is uh, 10 hits of oh. LSD, so I have hit that number. <laughs> Only 10? I'm just saying that's what they say makes you insane. Now, is that 10 hits at one time or over the course of your life? Oh, Jesus. I, uh, I think the most I've, I think I did two and a half once, and that was a long couple of days. Oh, I yeah, I, I did two yeah. green pyramid once and that was that was ugly. That's not nearly as bad as what peyote will do to you though. I was out in Tahoe when you're skiing and wow. I'm surprised <laughs> I survived. I don't know. I I don't know if we're doing the you know a drug interview now, but I we grew up with this <laughs> stuff called mescaline, microdot. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Massachusetts yeah. Uh, Mike yeah. that was a yeah. Oh God, that was the best. <laughs> that's that's why that's why Rich became a chemist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you nailed it to make mescaline. That's I'm I'm sitting in my mescaline uh, mansion right now. <laughs> call me Rich. Rich, call me. Call me. Oh, yeah. Hey, he owns an Imperial Cruise Star Cruiser, so <laughs> I made some money. I'll, I'll pick you up. <laughs> Damn. Times are different now. Everybody gets so paranoid about these, and then they go off and die off of what they took out of Mama's cupboard. 
Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't mess around anymore. I do like my edibles, but it's all homegrown stuff. Uh, I wouldn't buy anything off the street. Fentanyl scares the living. Oh God! Oh, it's, it's oh, yeah. deadly. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, you can't. Oh, those, those, mess, those days, mess, those days dude. are long gone. No, I think I, we I, all come to a point where you've got a wife who says, uh, "Me or that crap, your choice." You know. No, I, I mean it, it used to be no big deal. You know, cruising in a uh, a concert venue, you know, outside in the parking lot, tailgating somebody's selling stuff and you're like yeah give it to me but no no that's no that is long gone no. I think so. people aren't trustworthy anymore you never know what you're getting some of this fentanyl that i hear uh there we had a cop up here that had some splashed on him and uh just splashed on his skin and he uh they had to narc at him twice before they got him to the hospital you know i mean it's just it's crazy. It's, it's, nope. it's insane. No, well, I'll Mark, DP greens. Yeah. Keep it all in house. Keep it safe. Yeah. Now you turn them into gummies yourself. Uh, yeah, we have a magical butter machine. It makes the uh, the whatever the oil that you make the the extract, so you can make the gummies. Sure. Oh. So that's all legal in Maine now, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm jealous. What, are you some kind of narc, Joe? You're asking no, too many I questions. In, <laughs> I live in Minnesota, and it's not legal here. It's disappointing. Very disappointing. I think the cops yeah. are... Give it time. <laughs> cops? We only have one in town. <laughs> I'm sure she's she's staked out on the corner looking for out-of-state out of, out of licenses. They're yeah. still playing that game up here. I, uh, <laughs> I live in a small town. We don't even have a police force. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I live in a place where I leave my my keys in the truck or my wallet or whatever. It just doesn't matter. Well, I live outside of Reno, so. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I live south of Boston. We're not doing that here. No. Uh, my car's well, Joe my leaves his, every day. Joe probably leaves his Crocs in the car, so nobody wants to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right in the hood. I leave, my, I leave my Crocs outside the car so I don't have to walk through the dirt. The Crocs. The <laughs> they go out there and they say, this is a nice Tesla, but it's, it's got them Grocks in it. No, it ain't worth it. Leave the Tesla, right, Joe? No, nope, no, nope. Silverado, Silverado all the way. But I'll leave the Crocs sitting in the driveway so I don't have to dirty my feet on the way into the house. Mark, thank you for coming on the show. Thank I hope you, we Mark. didn't bore you with our rhetoric too much, but uh, no, it was fun, Mark. It, it, I appreciate you guys having me on, man. I really do. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. We had a good time uh, with you. Yep, mean- learned a lot, learned a lot. I really appreciate getting to know you a little better. And uh, as time goes on and this show matures, hopefully there's a chance of it maturing. You know, we'll have you back on. Oh, what's maybe your address maybe. again? Yeah. So we can <laughs> let, let our viewers know. You just got to look at yeah. the good, yeah, you got to read yeah. the book, man. <laughs> no, I can't do that again. We can't move again, man. I don't have enough money. <laughs> sincerely, though, sincerely, thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate, oh, appreciate it. it. Rich, great, Rich and Alan, it was great finally uh, talking to you guys live. Same to you, You brother. too, Mark. You too. Thank you for coming on, man. And thank you, everybody that joined us today. And with the comments and everything, we really appreciate it. It was a great time with Mark. Hopefully, we'll get to have him back on sometime if he, you know, wants to come back on with us. Because that was great. Yeah, give me a link, too. I'll put it up on my uh, sites. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. All Take right, care, guys. Bud. All right, thank you. Bye, guys. Uh...